Well, today on Nation, we do it every year. It's the winter episode. We're talking about prepping for winter. So if you have a harsh winter or even you have a mild winter, lucky you, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? How are you? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it's halfway all right. Hmm? Hopefully it's better than a cat video. You got a ton of content to catch up on. We've been doing this over three years. That's a lot of shows. Every single Friday it comes out on the platforms that you can listen to. SoundCloud, Google Play, uh, podcasts, anywhere podcasts are found. And then, of course, YouTube also. And if you're one of the cool kids, certified cool kids... You know how hard it is to point to a sticker over your back shoulder and a revert? Anyway, what's up? It is because of you that I get to have bright, fresh, shiny, new, year-old shoes. So thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, By the way, I would love nothing more than to be a rep for window cleaning supplies. So let me know if I can do anything for you. Please let me put your orders in. My number is 862-312-2026. That would be most epic if you did that. It takes you no longer, really, just to shoot me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And then I put that in, verify a couple things, put it in, two seconds, doesn't cost you any extra, and I get to live my lavish lavish lifestyle in front of my fancy wooden paneling. No, I really do appreciate it, though. Every one of you who uh, make sure to... Uh, Let me put your orders in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It really does mean a lot. Uh, There's so many of you out there who do it all the time. I can't say thank you enough. It literally is how I make my cheddar, how I live, and how I pay my family. So thank you. Virtual high five to all of you. But let me know. If you watch the uh, podcast, let me know you want a sticker and you'll get a limited edition Cool Kids certified sticker, which by the way, I told you guys we'd have uh, new batches uh, every, you know, so long. We get rid of one and we get in the next one. We double ordered, actually, we quadrupled ordered the first batch um, from where we uh, are normally going to be ordering. So uh, it was like, oh, we're saving money because you're getting even more stickers at once. Not thinking. So we're still on series one on the uh, Cool Kid sticker, but series two will come up probably still before the end of the year. So FYI. Um, but yeah, this week on Nation, I want to give a couple shout outs. First off to Michael Cruz, David Ringstaff, what's up, man? And Marco Sanchez, what's going on? Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, shout out. I'm trying to get back into shout outs. Uh, so when you order from me, let me know your name and that you want to shout out. I'll try to get you in, I swear. Sorry. Um, but either way, uh, this week we're talking about prepping for winter. Now, Winter sucks, right? I came from Wisconsin where our winters are really, really bad. Um, As compared to now in North Carolina, they're not so bad. But we're still based out of uh, New York, actually. So they still get a winter and I get to live vicariously through them. So, um, But if you're in an area whose winter really does suck, you got a lot more time on your hands than somebody who lives in, say, California. Uh, For me... I, in Wisconsin, really shut down, um, not really shut down, but you know, we still did some work, but not a ton, Uh, December, January, February, March, into April, we really started kind of back up, but everybody got in before Thanksgiving, and after Thanksgiving, it was totally, totally done, Uh, absolutely crazy, but um, that is really, you know, it varies, it varies no matter where you are. But that's kind of the skivvy on uh, where I was. But different places have different winters, obviously. So some of this stuff, uh, you guys are going to have more time than others. But there is a lot of things that need to get done in winter and prepping for winter. Prepping for winter is huge because we don't know what kind of winter we're having. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know if you do snow removal down below and how many trucks you're running. That's what I'd love to know. If you don't do snow removal, tell me where you are and what your winter average temperature is so I can just drool a little bit. Um, but winter has to be prepped for. 
that's kind of the big, you know, takeaway in winter is that people always go, well, winter slows down. It's my time to relax. You can relax to some degree, but there's still a lot of stuff that has to get done in winter. First off, schedule as much as possible going into winter. A lot of people say, well, we're starting to wrap up, so we're starting to cut things off. People, you know, want to get service, and we're kind of turning them away. But here's the thing. Just like when winter, uh, or I should say summer, comes in, you want to book people while it's busy, which is fall right now, into the winter as far as possible. Now, if you're doing gutter cleaning or anything like that, uh, you're going to get some colder temperatures. But pushing super hard when you're busy with advertising will fill up down the road. You may, somebody may call and say, hey, we're four weeks out, and they'll still book with you, right? Um, I would say, you know, we're four weeks out. If we have any openings before that, we'll uh, definitely give you a call. And usually people are like, oh, that's fine, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll get you done, you know, before uh, the end of the year for sure or something. But schedule as much as possible. If you schedule as much as possible, then it fills in to the winter. People always want to wait until it's slow, and then they're like, oh, man, i got to get a bunch of work and fill this in. It's not quite how it works. You want to fill it in while it's in people's brains, right? If people are hungry, they'll wait in line for food. If they're not, they're not going to wait in line. It's kind of that same concept, right? So schedule as much as possible going into winter. That's one thing that the rest of the year, if all year long you're running two months out, you need to hire. In winter time, two months from when I'm recording this, by the way, it's the uh, November right now, so two months would be January, the middle of January. Um, I don't think you're going to be cleaning too many windows if you're in a super cold area in the middle of January. And people are going to wait. You're going to pass all the um, holiday seasons. And that's where a lot of people want to prep their house. So there is kind of a, um, you know, kind of a a compromise. Now, one thing to think about. If you're scheduling out that far right now in this time of year, instead of hiring new people into a season that you're going to have to then lay them off, you may want to look at either having your guys come in or you coming in or everybody coming in on the weekends. I hate weekend work. Again, if you're watching and you love it, comment on YouTube, let me know. But yes, uh, weekends suck. Weekends are not where I want to work. I did not start a business so I could work harder than ever, right? But with that being said, when you fill it in, we're like squirrels. So fill it in when you can, get that weekend work maybe, and uh, that may help kind of get into winter. But the big thing is, is that getting into it, in probably a month from now, right after Thanksgiving, maybe up until the holiday of Christmas, you may want to keep your ads running. The big thing is that people will then call you. You're already booked out, right? You're booked out quite a while. But the big thing is, is that you're going to have to book somebody the week of Christmas. They call you, oh, okay, but gosh, could you do it this week? No. So having those ads, you're going to be uh, spending money and maybe not returning. So you may want to turn those ads off even sooner than that. Now, the big concept in winter, again, I, you know, I'm in North Carolina. We can clean year round. It still slows down in the winter, but our winter is smaller for where it slows down. We can get through December. January and February is a little bit slower and then gets back into it. February, right after Thanksgiving, or uh, gosh, Valentine's Day is when our spring starts. So our spring really starts getting in the tip of February and into March. So it depends on where you are. But killing those ads saves you from people just wasting your money. You cannot advertise when you're slow. And I've said this a hundred times and I'm telling you. There's a bunch of you out there binging right now. You're catching up on every episode. By the way, freaking awesome. Thank you. Uh, But you can't advertise when it's slow. And make a good ROI. Now, you can and maybe you'll pull somebody in or whatnot. But if you're really, really slow, you don't advertise. It's like McDonald's does not have radio slots for their food at, you know, 2.30 in the afternoon. They want to pick a slot that people are going to be hungry. They'll pick a slot before lunch and they'll pick a slot before dinner, right? But... It's very hard to advertise when somebody's not in the mood. I always say that too in like a cheeseburger. Like a billboard's great. If somebody's hungry or even a little bit, they look at that and it's just a big billboard of a cheeseburger. It looks amazing. I don't eat at McDonald's, but I remember McDonald's. McDonald's is amazing, right? 
There's the golden arches, and that's it. Red background. You go, man, yes, that's what I want. Pull off. But if you're driving and you're not hungry, you just ate like an hour ago, you look at it and you don't even think twice. You can't sell to somebody when they're not buying. So not spending money on ads is key. Now, the big thing is, is there's paid ads, of course. There's you know Facebook, Google clicks, uh, AdWords, all that fun stuff. But that, that thing, those are paid ads, and then there's free ads. You can free ad forever, every day, if you want. There is no harm or foul. If it's free and you have the time, do it. And that is the Craigslist, the Facebook Marketplace, the uh, you know uh, forums or next doors or all those places that it's free. Now, you may not get a return. Uh, you may not get a lot of people, but it'll keep it fresh. And they may take it for the next year. But you're not going to have a return on your investment unless it's a free investment. You can always get a return on a free investment. Because even if you break even, that means <laughs> nobody called you. You can still, you know, you're not lo- losing anything. So something to think about. Turn off those ads but going into winter um one of the big things that people kind of don't necessarily do or they talk about real heavy and then they get into that oh gosh i'm just kind of breathing getting ready for spring is fixing things every single winter when we did our shutdown after thanksgiving all the trucks got serviced all the tires got fixed if uh, any tires needed to be uh, done or rotated or changed all of the trucks got in for service If there was any rust, again, Wisconsin, and we did plowing, so of course there was always rust, the December is when we did all that, because we knew the trucks weren't going to be on the road, but I also knew that I could spend some money and get that last minute deduction. So we had all that stuff set. So your trucks can be off the road. Now, if you are a sole uh, owner-operator, you got to schedule the time. That's the hard part for an owner-operator, is scheduling the time, because for you, you maybe have a full day planned, but you do have to block off a day or two so that you can get those vehicles in. If you're doing it yourself, why? Uh, don't do your own oil changes. Like you can get an oil change done in 15 minutes, probably quicker, for like $30. Do that, and while you're waiting in the waiting room, start posting ads or working. You're so much val- more valuable doing something else than changing your own oil. You're not really saving that much time. If you like to work with your hands, who am I? I'm a nobody. So do do anything you want, but you're not saving by having uh, doing your own oil change. We actually had an on-site mechanic, which was one of the greatest things that I ever stumbled across, was a mechanic. He was a mobile mechanic. And uh, he had this big box truck with, I mean, everything. It was decked out with like workbench, welders, everything. And what he would do is I would call him in and uh, I would just have all the trucks sitting right there. I didn't have to bring them anywhere. He'd show up. Uh, we obviously we had an indoor facility for our vehicles, um, but he'd show up and do everything done, change all the brakes, you know, oil changes. Every time he came, he would do uh, wheels, everything right there. Boom, done. He'd get done three trucks and go, you know, come back and next do some more truck. Like having a mobile on-site mechanic's awesome. I don't even think he was really that much more, but it just saved you from having to drive there. The the big thing in business is that. The bigger and more busy you get, the less time you have available for things. Now, the big thing that comes into play when you have a lack of time is you have to uh, delegate and do what makes you the most money. Now, if you are the person who sells the work in your business, guess what makes you the most money? Sales. Like you can go out and sell, you're building your business, you're building equity in your business, you're building new customers, you're getting your name out there, that's the most valuable thing you can do. You can delegate someone cutting your lawn, you know, someone doing your oil changes, someone, you know, whatever, cleaning, doing your office work, whatever the things are that take you away, you have to then uh, spend your time doing the things that make you the most money. So fix vehicles, fix your equipment, that's another one. Guys go into um, seasons, with just junk equipment. On top of that, remember it's the end of the year. Again, you may be watching this and going, don't talk about that yet, it's so far away. But it's not. We're like, uh, what, 25 days? Something like that, maybe? I'm wrong, 15? No, 30? Anyway, we're like 40 days away from like Christmas. Like 45, 50 days away from the end of the year. A month and a half, and it will be 2021. 
So getting this stuff planned, get your new vehicles. If you think at all it's in the budget, if you think at all that it's in the budget, get a new vehicle. If you're going to start new vehicles, you know, if you're leasing, if you're doing payments or buying or whatever, talk to a tax advisor, but get that in before the end of the year. There's tons of benefits to that. That's when you prep because you have nothing but time to set the truck up. Another thing is equipment. Now, I'm the guy who sells equipment. So for me, equipment's always a big deal. I always tell people, buy your equipment, blah, 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 buy through me. But it's true. Getting new equipment, getting new stuff in, refreshing stock, changing things out, updating, uniforming things, which I know every year by uh, before January or in January, I would always go in uniform, which uh, uniform people uh, means everything I would have the same. So I would talk to guys and go, okay, what equipment do you like? Let's get the same buckets because people can see those. Let's get them wrapped. We get the decals. We get all that stuff. Gear skin stuff, you know that's out there. That's that thing that's coming out um, that is a basically a branding wrap for all your equipment. Buckets, um, bucket on a belt. You get your logos printed all on vinyl. Get them put on everything. That stuff all happens over the winter so that when you start off in spring, you're fresh and clean. Because all year you're going to be beating stuff up. You're going to be losing stuff and replacing stuff. and doing. You're always going to be a little bit rougher coming into winter than you were going out of winter as far as your looks. I get our new apparel. Always buying new apparel. All of that gets done in the again, end of the year. It's a last minute deduction for all that apparel and then we let it sit on a shelf when guys need it, change them all out. Uh, they exchange one shirt for one shirt. So when somebody wants a new shirt, they bring me their shirt and I give them one. They give me, you know, bring it in a bag and there's three shirts. I take those three shirts, I give them three more shirts and throw those three away. Or use them as rags or whatever. But getting them uniform, getting them clean, getting them ready for the next year always helps you. When you're busy, you can't think of this stuff. So keep that in mind. Buying equipment. I know I'm that guy, but if you're getting into Waterfed, why not get the equipment? Black Friday sales are going on right now at windowcleaner.com. Um, get a deal while still getting that write-off. Getting new equipment means new squeegees, new rubber. Buy a gross of rubber. Get all that gear that you need. Now's the time to do that. Getting into winter, not until spring. Don't get it in spring. Buy it now so that you know and budget through the winter. Another big thing that I loved to do is to go over expenses. I know that sounds really corny and I'm not a numbers guy. In fact, I wasn't even the one that actually did that. But we would go over and have, um, we called her my office goddess, still just awesome, awesome uh, assistant. But she just went through everything. We said, okay, we're going to do a check. So it went through all of the insurance coverages, checked against pricing, what went up, what went down, what can we get rid of. Hey, we got this thing, you know, the dumpster. Uh, we're running a 10-yard dumpster, but we could do a 6-yard or whatever it is. Getting those uh, adjustments all year, you're so busy, like just do it, just do it. I, I got to get like a Canva account. Get a Canva account, I just, but then I didn't use it through the year. Drop the Canva account, save 200 bucks. Uh, Canva's like building out uh, marketing templates without having to use Photoshop, Illustrator, that type of thing, but it's fast. Uh, MailChimp, all those programs that you could use, check things. I go through every single year and it's kind of a little game, but it's to see how much money I can save every single month. And I'm telling you, throughout one year, I'll save $500 a month when it comes December. All the things I'll change and adjust and fix, I'm saving because I take changes, drop things. I could save $500 a month in expenses by just going through everything. A lot of people get stagnant and they kind of let it sit out there. There's a few things that I'll never change. Let me make that clear. I'll never skimp on insurance, not ever. Like I know my insurance, I'll go over coverages to make sure I'm coverage, make sure, uh, again, uh, with everything that's gone on in the past few months, now you're talking about um, uh, terrorist clauses and things and riders on that, like that stuff I'll adjust, numbers I'll adjust, I'll make sure coverages are there, and uh, I'll talk to them about, um, you know, doing multiple discounts or if there's any discounts we're leaving behind. But I'm not going to get a cheaper insurance just because it's cheaper. I'm telling you, it's one of those things that if you've ever had anybody who's filed insurance, 
claim for business, you have to have them on your side. So that's a tough one. Keep that in mind. I'll never get rid of uh, training. All my sales training that I do, I'll never skimp on that. I like who my trainers are. I go through that. Same thing who people who come to me for training. I Well, again, that's one of those things that you could do deciding your own, but I don't get rid of training. I don't get rid of learning. So my magazine subscriptions to uh, the American Window Cleaner and to all the other publications, I do not get rid of those. I keep them. So there's certain things that I'll always have, but some things I'll go through. Like I said, uh, commodities and uh, my internet. I'll always go through that to kind of see where we are. Can we get something better? The internet prices change. Cell phone packages change. There's discounts going on. There's a lot of different things that I will change um, just to see if I can save money. So go through it and see what you can do uh, for yourself. You'll be pretty darn shocked at that, by the way. Uh, but another thing to do in winter or preparing to get into that winter time is going to be going over your um, uh, systems. Systems, they just get stagnant over a while. Like if you have systems in place now, I always sit it down and I take all my guys and I sit them down in our uh, conference room, whatever. And like, all right, let's look at everything, every way we do things. What did we change? What do we not like? What should we do? How can we make this better? Oh, well, uh, we started kind of uh, looking at um, the possibility of changing, you know, our uh, greeting. Instead of uh, greeting them, we give them the invoice first and then we get to work. We have now the tech. We wanted the tech to start working and change those systems to accommodate for the next year. They've had an entire year. And if it's you, maybe you know your systems. But you've had an entire year to see what works and what doesn't. Now's the time to change in your systems. Reboot systems. If you don't have systems in place, now is the time to put those together. Now's the time to have systems. I know I beat that like a dead horse, but I'm telling you, when you have systems in a way that it gets done every single time, you never have a job where you mess up. You never start forgetting stuff. If you do everything, all of a sudden you always have your emails. You always have your reviews. You always get that. And now all of a sudden, a year later from now, if you create systems now, it gets done the exact same way for a year. That's huge. Big changes happen in your company just because of systems. What I also do is before January 1, I build out my marketing calendar for the following year. So I'll put everything together down so I know what we're doing, when we're doing it, everything so that I have a playbook to go through next year. Now, like I said, I don't have a hard date on our first EDDM mailer. I don't have that because you never know if it's going to be March 1st everything goes crazy, which in Wisconsin it never did, but you never know, or April 1st, right? So I have that first start date. I don't have dated, so I have a week. Boom, 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 boom. I have all the weeks out. And then what happens is when we first get that call in spring, we're like, yes, this week is it, man. Everybody's calling. That calendar then gets pushed to that. Everything from there on for the rest of the year gets a date. And then we know every single week what happens from that point. Put that out there. Marketing calendar is huge. Otherwise, you forget things. On my marketing calendar, guess what I don't do July 1st? I don't advertise hard. It's just the dead of summer. I just don't advertise hard July 1st. But guess what I do at the end of July? I advertise hard. Right? So make sure that calendar is there. Make sure you're following it. Because if you don't, then why even have it in the first place? And uh, I'm telling you, it's just like systems. You build it out so that this thing runs itself. The playbook is there. That's what you do. Marketing calendar is huge. Um, before the beginning of the year, I'll also push my SEO and website. Now, another reason is if you're going to change any plans, now you're doing that anyway with your plans. Um, if you say, hey, website's done really, really well, we want to push it even harder. Now you lay out all that stuff. You make the changes so that it can index and everything before spring. Now's the time to do that for when you get busy. Don't do it when you're busy because it won't index until the middle of summer. So get your SEO work done. Fix your website. Make it amazing. Rebuild it. Get more pictures up there. Embed any widgets. Use Responsibid or uh, Nice Job or any of those other kind of things that can help your website. Reviews are huge for your website. Responsibid. I'm telling you, that still is my favorite program 
for websites. I, I never just... I, you, you're sleeping and you're booking jobs. Anyway, look at response. But we, by the way, I have a code for that. If you want it, let me know. I'll get you that. Uh, it's like a discount trial thing. Pretty awesome. But get that stuff all ready. Get your website. Get your SEO. Get all that done. If you have SEO work or you have AdWords coming in, that's going to be in your marketing calendar. So keep that in mind. And another thing that we kind of talked about before is logoing up your gear. If you're refreshing your logo or you're just putting it on everything, now's the time to do that. My last, and I've only done one major um, logo like rebranding thing. I've only done it once um, and it did it this time of year because I wanted everything in. I needed all new stuff, so new envelopes. I need a new letterhead. I need new shirts, sweatshirts, hats. I need new, all the trucks had to get redone. All of that. I had to do all of that before spring. So now's the time to do that. Put it all together. It's the only time to, to do that. And by the way, if you're doing logo stuff again, check out that uh, gear skins. It's pretty awesome. New product kind of coming out. But it's the time. Winter sucks, but we have to prep for winter because winter is its own season. I know right now with the way that it is, our fall, there was no light switch. There was no big boom instantly. Nothing, 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 everything. There was none of that. And I think it's because of the social cues weren't there, right? People didn't go back to school. People didn't get done with their vacations. You know, people haven't really started thinking about the holidays yet. It just doesn't feel like anything's changed because the social cues, the things that we've had all of our lives didn't happen. My kids never went back to school. They're doing virtual. So we didn't have first day of school. First day of school is like, oh man, everybody goes new clothes shopping for school. Before that, they get all ready. Everything's laid out. It's this big thing. Guess what? They're back at school. Now my brain thinks fall. It didn't happen. Actually, I don't even think my kids went back to school shopping. I think they, I didn't, <laughs> I don't think they did. So I'm sorry to them, but you know, it's one of those things that those are all social cues. It didn't really happen. So this winter is a little bit tricky. Uh, the fall's a little bit weird. But either way, we'll get out of it. It'll be amazing. But you got to plan for fall. If you haven't ordered supplies through me, this is my shameless plug. I would love, really love. I mean, I put in $50 orders and I put in $5,000 orders, right? Any order, any size, every time, I would love it. If, uh, if the podcast gives you any value at all, or even if you just want to be nice, give me that virtual high five. Let me put your order in. Shoot me a text, 862 862- 312-2026. Yes, that's my cell phone. You can call me, text me. It's a VoIP, actually, so don't send me pictures because I don't put pictures on it. Because, you know, it's 2020. Why would that be a thing? But anyway, let me put the orders in. Uh, really, I do appreciate that from everybody. It is the way I make my cheddar, so thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's everything. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and comment down below and give us a thumbs up. It helps the videos. Uh, if you're sharing content, do that. That's super awesome. And if you're listening anywhere podcasts are, leave a review. That would be absolutely amazing. And until next time, hopefully you get prepped for winter. Hopefully winter is not bad on all of us. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.